Have you ever felt like your diagnostic process is missing something? You've already got a really good scan tool and a multimeter, and maybe even you've already got an oscilloscope, but some faults you still really struggle with and it feels a little bit like guesswork. Well, today we're gonna to get into that. This isn't another top five list of tools you already own. These are five diagnostic tools that most mechanics don't use, but absolutely should if they want faster, smarter, more profitable diagnostics. Let's check it out. So just a little disclaimer here, we paid for all of these tools, apart from the Top Dom thermal camera, which they sent us a little while back. So these are tools that we went out and bought because we thought that they could make your life easier with diagnostics. Let's get into it. So most technicians think that scan tool data is the key when diagnosing AdBlue and SCR faults, especially when it comes down to looking at NOx sensor data. So what we have here is the Kane gas bench and it's the EGA exhaust gas analyzer one. Now what makes this special is that it only measures NOx gas. Now you might not think that is very special, but what makes it special is the price. So generally NOx gas analyzers can cost up to 3000 pounds. This one with just the NOx gas analyzer was much, much cheaper and it was around 600 pounds. Still sounds like a lot of money. However, without this tool, you cannot diagnose AdBlue faults accurately. Now we've got a whole course on this in the Mechanic Mindset Diagnostic Coach. We go out on the road and show you different values and different faults, but let's go and plug this into the car outside and see what readings we get. Okay, so we are connected up to the vehicle now. We're measuring the NOx values here. So we've got after SCR cat, which is the what's going to be coming out of the tailpipe. And we've got a reading of around 126 ppm. We've also got the NOx bench connected in the exhaust. And you can see that this is reading a value of around 154. Now, it's not very often that you see the two values reading exactly the same. There are actually no uh, SCR faults on this vehicle, but the benefit of using the NOx gas analyzer is that it's not affected by AdBlue. And what I mean by that, if you inject excess AdBlue into the exhaust, the NOx sensor will pick that up as NOx and give you an artificially high reading. So being able to compare the NOx gas analyzer to the NOx sensors will mean um, you get a true reading. Uh, it's just so, so valuable and it will help you diagnose SCR problems much, much quicker if you can confirm that the readings coming out of the sensors are actually close to what the exhaust gas is. We can actually see now as well, the values come down to 72 and this one is dropping in line with that. So you've got to remember as well, we've got this quite long pipe on there. So there will be a bit of delay from what you read on here compared to there. Uh, another thing you might want to do is disconnect the AdBlue injector and then see that all of the values are reading roughly the same, which means you can then test both AdBlue sensors against the actual exhaust gas composition. Like I said, very powerful stuff, and we've got a full course on this inside the Diagnostic Coach program. Feedback from our members tells us that battery drain diagnostics just drives people absolutely crazy. And this is where the thermal camera comes in. It's literally the cheat code for battery drain diagnostic faults. So this tool here is from Top Don. There's lots of different versions out there. And what makes it so great is that it can pretty much see current flow because current flow equals heat. If you've got a battery draining and it's drawing current through a particular component, there's a very good chance you'll be able to see it with this. Potentially saving you hours of heartache pulling fuses out trying to find the location of a battery drain. Again, we've got a whole course on battery drain diagnostics. We do a particularly interesting case study where we do intermittent battery drain diagnostics using serial decoding and the Pico scope. But we also show you how to make the most out of this as well. Let's take a look and let me show you some things that people misunderstand when doing battery drain diagnostics with a thermal camera. I'm just going to take you to the back of the vehicle and show you something on this because there's a bit of a myth going around regarding these battery drains and fuses getting hot. Let's take a look. Okay, so the best way to use these is to start from a distance and try and get as much of the vehicle 
in the shot as you can. Now we can see there are two hot spots there. Um, it looks like they're, they're on the bonnet. If we just go down here, it's actually the heated washer jets on both sides there. Okay, so um, they could be easy to miss if you're, you know, if you've got your head down under the bonnet. So let's just go round to the back of the vehicle now. Let's just pop our head inside there. You can see that everything has uh, come to life. We've got the ignition on and you know lots of things getting warm we've got the controller in the center console there but i just want to show you the, uh, the the fuse box so here you can see we've got a fuse box at the back of the vehicle now this vehicle has been on for quite a while and you know most of these fuses will have current flowing through them and if we point the camera at it the thermal camera we can actually see there are some hot spots on there However, it's not the fuses that we're looking at. It's the little vents on the control unit here, okay? Now, the fuses, to get warm, will need a massive amount of current going through them, really being pushed to the limit of what that fuse can hold. So, if we think about how a fuse works, it's gonna carry current up to the rating at which is designed for. So, if you run a 10 amp fuse at nine amps, that fuse is gonna get warm. However, if you put one amp through a 10 amp fuse, I probably wouldn't expect that fuse to be very warm or show up on a thermal camera image. So just bear that in mind when you are going through your diagnostic process for battery drains, how big is the drain and how likely is it that that drain will make a fuse get hot? Otherwise, start from a distance and work your way around the car so you don't miss anything. Okay, so this one's really misunderstood. This isn't just some toy that the man on the tool van sold you. It's actually a very, very powerful circuit diagnostic tool. I was actually super impressed with how it performed on a recent live training we did where we pitched this tool against some other cheaper models. Now, uh, spoiler alert, the cheaper model didn't perform anywhere near as good as this thing did. So it's worth paying the extra. So the idea with the ECT3000, connect it onto your battery, connect this to the wire that you want to test, and then you use this tool here to trace along the wire to find the wire break or short circuit, it'll find that too. Like I said, we spent around about two and a half hours on a live training, really putting this thing through its paces. I think we even discovered it could find resistive uh, problems too if you connected up the tool in a particular way. Let me give you a quick demo. So the ECT3000 wire brake finder, we need to connect it up to a power supply. I think it's also important that you connect it to the power supply of the vehicle you are testing. Might sound weird, but I've tried to uh, demonstrate this on the bench before and I couldn't get it to work. However, on the vehicle, it's pretty impressive, watch this. So this is now sending out a signal on this line here, and this here is gonna detect it. This is like the little uh, sensor. So we turn this on and you can set the uh, sensitivity. And if you go along this wire, when you get to the end of the wire, it will pick up the signal. Let's try it on the car. So we've got a wire that's been removed there from the connector and we're just going to go straight onto that and now the idea is that you would go along the loom looking for it so you can see that it's picking up the signal there but what we want to do is follow the loom so that loom comes in and down here of course you would want to pull all this back as well to check that it's it's not behind there so you would follow it along it's actually very uh, very sensitive and if we just trace up along this wire here, we can see that it's picked it up there. It actually picked it up just before, around here, look. Now that is actually where I've soldered that wire and, it, and it's picking that up, so that's quite interesting that it does that. Um, but you get to the end there of that wire, you can see that it's, it's picking it up. That Power Probe ECT3000, really impressed with that. Just beware of the cheaper ones that you might find on some of the sites on the internet. 
Suspension knocks, rattles and squeaks can be an absolute nightmare to find, especially if you can't replicate them on the lift. This is where the chassis ears comes in. This isn't the actual chassis ears, it's a, that's a brand name of the real deal. But I'm surprised how many mechanics and technicians don't know about this tool. I pretty much spent my whole apprenticeship strapped into one of these. So what makes this really good is that you don't need another technician hanging out of the window trying to look for where the knocks and rattles might be coming from. Once you've got this set up on the vehicle, you can actually listen to multiple points that you have set this up on to try and locate where the noise is coming from. So how it works is you get these uh, microphone clamps which you can put onto the vehicle. Uh, chassis do make a wireless version as well. I just went for the wired version. It's kind of what I uh, just felt like getting at the time. But you clip these into different parts on the uh, vehicle and then you can connect up the earphones to the small box. And then as you drive down the road, switch the channels to see which channel is the loudest. Like I said, I spent so much time using one of these to find knocks, squeaks and rattles, and it saved so much time and you could just find them so fast. Let's just do a little demonstration with something loose on the vehicle over there. So let's take a look at the chassis ears. Now, this was just the cheap version of the tool. After having a play with this one, I really recommend that if you want something like this, go and get the Steelman chassis ears. They were like the ones that made it originally and it will be much better quality than the one that we've got here. So what I've done is I've simulated a knocking noise on here and what we're going to do is listen in. So we're going to turn it on, get the headphones on and see where we think the knocking noise is coming from. So really simple test there and I hope you agreed that number two was the loudest, the yellow channel. And all I did on here was just set a loose, just loosen that bolt off a bit and we put the connectors onto different points on the system and clearly the yellow one was the loudest. Now that tool has saved me so much time in the past where you think a noise is coming from one particular place but it's actually coming from somewhere else and I've actually diagnosed some really interesting knock and rattle noises which can be sometimes really difficult to find and the wireless one might be a good option actually because i've just got myself into a right mess <laughs> you knew this one was coming most mechanics might own a scope already few of them use it even fewer of them take full advantage of the power these things can really deliver it's like the ultimate lie detector for a vehicle this thing can really see the things that the scan tool cannot tell you anything about. Now, many people think that oscilloscopes are too advanced or too time consuming. The real truth is that once you start to use them and get used to using them regularly, they get much, much easier. And the thing is, you cannot diagnose things on modern vehicles without them. You know, your multimeter can only test so many things and the scan tool pretty much stops at live data and fault codes. Time to get the scope out when things get tough. I've lost count of the amount of times an oscilloscope has helped find a very simple problem on vehicles that have had the parts cannon fired at it. As you know, we love oscilloscopes at Mechanic Mindset. We've got so many lessons and courses of how you can make the most of this in the Diagnostic Coach program. For sure, I admit it, with oscilloscopes, you can really get carried away and start getting involved in really in-depth testing, like this test we've got set up here. We are looking at the crankshaft sensor. We've got all four ignition coils set up, a trigger on cylinder one so we can identify it, and pulse sensor measurements on the intake system. But, you know, let's face it, you're not doing that every day. However, there are things that you test regularly that really require the use of an oscilloscope. 
just like this simple test we've got here. So this is an air mass meter on the B48 BMW engine. And you know, you don't need a massive oscilloscope setup to test these things. However, this type of sensor cannot be tested with a normal multimeter. So this multimeter here is really cool. It's actually got uh, an oscilloscope built into it and a signal generator. But if we go over to the oscilloscope now, you can actually see that the signal coming out of this air mass meter is not the uh, frequency type either. Now, if we just uh, expand the waveform a bit, we can actually see that the signal on this air mass meter is the scent type signal, okay? Now, as I said, you can't test that with a multimeter. On modern vehicles, you really need to have an oscilloscope in your toolbox. If you haven't, make sure you go and buy one and learn how to use it. So if you're serious about diagnostics, the scan tool will just not fill all of the gaps to help you fix every vehicle. These tools really help you fill those gaps that most people didn't even realize they had. At Mechanic Mindset, we're not here to sell tools. We teach you how to use them properly. If you want to go deeper and take your diagnostics to the next level, be sure to come and check out what we have on offer at mechanicmindset.com. The Diagnostic Coach Programme has over 30 technical training diagnostic courses, plus we hold a live training session every month right here in our workshop. And I hope to see you at the next one.